Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'd like to take you to Today Art Museum. Founded in 2002, it's the first privately owned and privately run not-for-profit art museum in Beijing. Last year, I came here to see a fashion show at this museum. In case if you'd like to check it out, I will leave a link in the description. It's conveniently located right at the heart of the CBD, overlooking the tallest skyscraper and the new CCTV headquarter. You can see from the density of the buildings, this is where money is. Perhaps that's the reason why today Art Museum is a bit commercial, or let's say commercially successful. Of course, they chose to be commercial for good reasons, but because the museum occupies 10,000 square meters, and you can find this large installation of Yue Mingjun in the parking lot. Behind, there are three exhibition centers, an art store slash cafe. Imagine how many employees it must sustain on a daily basis. This exhibition is called FAS, it's not possible. FAS, what does it even mean? I couldn't find any hints. Later, I saw on the brochure that it was short for fun and fashion art space. Well, there is a F missing somewhere, but I guess this is the way they call it. It's a brand for pop art and collectibles. I visited their WeChat page and saw the way they communicated their artists. I was floored. They constantly made references to pop stars like Chris Wu, popular literature like The Three Body Problem, and they even described a work of Hajimi Sorayama as the the BFF of cows. Many renowned male, well, let's say pop stars, couldn't resist but to take her home. And I was like, does cows even know that he has a BFF now? In this exhibition, you can find some look-alikes of famous contemporary artworks, and the artists here were inspired by and paying tribute to those famous artists. Is that legal? Yes, because art styles cannot be protected by law, so it's okay to follow a certain style or follow a certain movement. But is that really necessary to do this? That's another question. Personally, I don't have problems with artists doing this because our inspiration comes from different sources and channels, and sometimes without even realizing, we just feel the urge to recreate Disney characters. My personal favorite homage goes to this one, Ruan English style Michelin. It's called Ruan Michelin by artist Chi Lei. What do you think of this one? Do you like it? <laughs> Leave me a comment in the comment box below. When I was explaining to my parents why the toilet was a thing in contemporary art, a group of museum employees came with a golden toilet. It was like America by Italian artist Maurizio Caitlin. I went to ask why this installation came three days after its opening. A staff told me that it was not an installation, it was a decoration. And the artist thought it would be funny to put, a, let's say, a golden toilet next to his toilet painting. And they gathered and discussed how to prevent kids from using it as actual toilet, because their toilet, the real one, it was undergoing renovation. And I was like, now you put it here and, and you were worried that we use it. Later on, they blocked the toilet with some toilet paper. Let's say it's a funny way to let's say, wrap it and put some dollar sign onto it. It's, it's kind of cool, depending on if you like it, I guess. I saw two live streamers who were covering this exhibition. Live streaming is a huge business today in China. Professional streamers go live at least eight hours per day and it's a, a lucrative business. And you can also consider it as, let's say, a proper job. And today Art Museum was okay with selfie sticks and voiceovers like this. I guess they needed the media coverage. If you would like to know more about uh, live streaming business in China, let me know in the comment below. The exhibition occupies two floors. Upstairs, I found this famous red lobster from Philip Colbert. Uh, on the brochure, he was described as the godson of Andy Warhol. 
Now, I wasn't sure if those works were original or merchandising because it was not really written. So I asked a staff and she asked me back, like, what do you mean by original works? So I went over uh, with her the 12 copy law in France and what it means to be original and you know, all of that. And she was like, only 12 copies that was so few now, some of the works here you see have thousands of copies and i was like oh thousands of copies that's so many <laughs> then i saw an artwork with no label no signature and actually liked the work so i asked another staff who is the artist and another staff told me that it was made by the same artist who did the loudspeakers downstairs and I couldn't find the loudspeaker, so I went down and I asked and I found it was really funny. I couldn't notice that they were actually loudspeakers at first. And I felt quite bad because several labels were missing in this exhibition. And in this way, artworks looked just like generic products in the store. And I think they deserve to be treated better. There was again another work without label. I want to ask a different staff. I don't want to bother the same one over and over again about this installation work. And she told me that the balloons came with the work on the back wall. So I went to the back wall and checked and there wasn't any work. Uh, there was nothing there. So I went back to her and she told me, oh, the work hasn't arrived. And I was like, okay, maybe I was too early, but hey, like, don't you need to put a sign or like at least put a label or like work in progress or something. Overall, it was still fun visiting the exhibition. Today, Art Museum hasn't been, let's say, a traditional art museum. It's the trends of young collectors and art lovers, museum goers, and perhaps live streamers as well. And my main concern isn't, let's say, the exhibition or the museum. My main concern is the marketing strategy of FAS. It's a high-end art mall with renowned and emerging artists. Their marketing was very effective, uh, was very straightforward, and let's say even aggressive. They marketed their artists as entertainers, like K-pop stars. And they used marketing terms like BFF of cows, like God Song of Andy Warhol, which might be effective today but very short-sighted and short-term. It's just not sustainable. Even if you are okay with being uh, under the shadow of Warhol and calling Warhol your godfather, and even Warhol was okay with you using his name and calling him godfather, but there still could be a better way of promoting yourself. And in my opinion, that it's worth it to spend the time and promote yourself as an independent artist to, let's say, show your unique self and maybe it would take you more time but in the long run you will have a lot more in return and you will be able to build an art brand of your own not free riding on someone else's brand that's all what i want to say today uh, let me know what you think of this exhibition in the comment below thank you very much for watching i see you in the next video